Hi, I'm Warren Yates with YatesBanjos.com and today I'm going to show you how to make these little tiny washers that you can't ever seem to buy anywhere that goes on your banjo coordinator rods. In a banjo we have to use coordinator rods in order to tie the neck on and be able to get some type of stability. And we always put a washer between the rod and the wood so that we can push on a bigger surface to keep from damaging the wood. But you can't just use a uh, standard small washer from the hardware because they will, they'll end up bending and bowing up. Plus it just doesn't look like good quality. So if you, of course if you buy some good ones that's good, but if you're trying to make them, uh, basically you need something that looks nice and is thick enough to stand there and hold up and not want to bend. This is a simple um, half inch in diameter brass rod that I'll put in my lathe and I'm going to first uh, face off the surface. I'm using a center drill to get my hole started in the center and basically that's a, a machinist type of a starting drill bit that's very rigid that helps you to find the center and stay very accurate. And that's all it does is finds the center. The reason you wouldn't just start drilling that hole with the drill bit is drill bits tend to be long and wobbly and if they find a center that's a little bit off then the further down the shaft you drill the more inaccurate it becomes. Okay, the next thing is is making sure that the surface uh, is the way I need it to be and I like to set my cutter up to where it will put the finishing bevel on this outside edge so you have to grind these tools to be able to work so I'll show you a little bit. Let's see I would be considered cut in half if I go a little further Got a little bevel on there. So from there I can count over however far that I want to go to achieve the thickness that I'm looking for. Okay, I started a groove. So I'll go ahead and, and use a file and I can champ for those two ends while I'm there at the same time. And also take a little something and knock the burr off the inside of that as well. And then just uh, as it cuts off, put something in there to catch it. Okay, so now that I'm there and it's flat, I'll go ahead and put that little chamfer on at the same time. you notice when I was uh, putting my little screwdriver in there to catch the uh, pieces that falls off well it's kind of convenient because now I can carry them to the next area where I can deburr that last little spot simply because they're still stuck to the screwdriver. Now you can do this all day long but the thing is is you only need so many at a time and, and, and like in my case I have so many things going on I can't just make these all day long. I have to make some of all of it. So I've got a chamfering tool and a drill, and certainly there's got to be better ways to do this. But uh, 
yeah, this works for, for now. You know, I now I've chamfered the inside of the hole. And, uh, you know, pick up another one, just kind of get through it. I hate to grab it with a pair of pliers because then it wants to put a, some kind of a mark on there. You can, uh, you can sand them flat, but then, you know, it just doesn't, uh, add that little touch of quality, but, and then your scratches shows up in your plating. So, you know, it's one of those things you play with it, and certainly you're going to find things that's, uh, uh, better than what I'm doing. Okay, so even though that's a, a small part, it is a, a very important part. Uh, you can't build a banjo without one, so if you if you don't buy them or you decide that you want to make them, you've got some alternatives there. And uh, you know, it's like anything. If uh, you know, the more you do to a project, the the less you have to buy. And if you do more work to a an instrument that you're building, rather than paying somebody else to, the more you get to make off of each one, and you don't really have to build as many in order to make the same amount. So. Uh, Anyway, at this point, it's, it's ready for plating, so that's a whole different art in itself. So rather than sending them off somewhere, you can buy some of these little uh, uh, plating kits to where uh, you can experiment with it a little bit and kind of start getting dangerous with that, I guess. Uh, but it's uh, uh, generally, it's, it's a cleaning process. It's uh, copper plating which acts like a, a primer if you're thinking of it as far as uh, paint is concerned. And then your nickel goes over the top of that. So until next time, uh, hope you enjoyed it.